You know, it's interesting because what you're describing is something that's really near and dear to my heart. And that's private sector public health. Because you just gave us, you know, public health 101. We, we've, all, we, we've all learned so much about public health from the pandemic. But what you just described is public health. But beyond the scope, really, of, of our current capabilities in, in an organization like the CDC that's called public health. But if you go out to United Health Group with your incredible broad reach, not just in the country, but in the world, um, we can start implementing public health 101 via the tools and resources of the private sector. Yeah, we, we have to, we found ourselves having to build deep relationships with not only the CDC, which has been outstanding and very rewarding for us, but also for our local communities because our people, while we can look at the, at the workplace, our peop uh, people that we serve go home and they get into the community and all. So it will always be a, a collaboration for a joint sharing of responsibility to keep an eye on these pathogens so that we can act early and act appropriately. Yeah, that's, a, that's really incredible. Um, what, what I wanted to do was to kind of wrap things up by um, talking a little bit about the other area that I think um, mm -hmm. is of interest to everybody, um, both now, even though everybody seems to feel like we're, we're over this thing. You and I both know the yeah. chances are we're not over this thing, and there could be a second peak at the first wave and a second yeah. wave, all new words that we've had. And I want to talk a little bit about the medical supply chain, which most of us never talk about. Nobody, if you ask the average doctor, they, they wouldn't even know what you were talking about if you ask them before the pandemic. But now they've experienced what happens when the medical supply chain fails. So talk to us a little bit about the work that you did with, um, that United Health Group did with uh, PPE and with the ventilators. So some of it has been, the work we've done to, to acquire PPE is really, was designed to protect the workforce that is directly serving, the frontline workforce directly serving patients. But not only for our, our own 100,000 physicians and clinicians, but also the people we contract with and others in the field. Because we're gonna get on top of this thing, you need to have people capable of waging that war. So uh, uh, a few things that we did, we did point, some was philanthropic, giving millions of dollars for the, uh, for, to help procure uh, and then to distribute uh, PPE and to be able to provide to stockpiles, you know, anything we had in excess. But first and foremost, you got to protect them, get them access to the masks, to the gowns, to the face shields, and, and all of that, as well as to go out. For instance, one of the things we did was to actually manufacture uh, face shields. We did that in Brazil. Yeah. And it was one of the ways to make it. What's that? Yeah. I hope you left some there because they need it really badly now. And we did. We built it for them. But we essentially, what we did was we, we uh, worked with some of the local manufacturers of using plastic molding and helped them come up with a, a very simplified way of doing it. But another thing that we did in terms of PPE is decrease its requirement. And the way in which we did that was very interesting. We noticed from our data, we use analytics and clinical insight uh, uh, and our analytics to be able to start identifying why something's happening. One of the reasons we were using up gowns and masks and so forth was to, in order to do testing, you needed to have a, a licensed provider do the deep nasal pharyngeal swabs wearing full PPE. Well, if you didn't have to do that kind of deep nasal swab and we could get an adequate sample from the, from the nares, and then maybe the patients can do it themselves. You do it under supervision. And that's what we tested. So up in our Everett Clinic, we worked with uh, Bill and Melinda uh, Gates uh, Foundation and conducted a trial with over 500 patients in which we compared both the nasal pharyngeal swabs to, to the nasal turbinate swabs as well as the anterior nary swabs and found they were all equivalent. And yeah. therefore it was safe. Really if the patients can do it, then what happened was all of a sudden we've liberalized the availability of uh, uh, patients to be able to do it themselves 
and we didn't have the requirements in terms of the consumption of PPE, the masks and the face shields and the gowns and gloves and all, that we required in the past when we had to do it ourselves. We went on and used that model and conducted a 500 person study in one week. We were able to publish it. And the, the CDC and, uh, and HHS and the FDA went ahead and authorized our means of collecting, self-collection, supervised self-collection as a, as a preferred means of, of, uh, obtaining, uh, of obtaining samples. Well, I, I love that example because it's showing you how innovation, thinking out of the box, um, can help you to basically squeeze out the waste. Because what you're saying is a lot of that PPE was was being wasted because of a process that was less efficient than it could be once you proved that your new process uh, could work. Exactly. So I could keep talking to you forever, but mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there, there's uh, time for us to wrap up now. But I'm hoping, Dr. Bibiori, that um, you'll come back and join us again so we can talk about mm -hmm. some of the other things that um, that United Health Group is doing in the pandemic, and not just in the pandemic, but it really sounds like um, like you're you're fundamentally changing the approach of the organization to healthcare, and hopefully forever. No, thank you. It's been part of our culture. Um, we we really focus on th three co core competencies, which is clinical insight from having all these clinicians in the company. The second is the technology that allows us to serve a large system, but to generate the data that we then use to our analytic competence to help find problems. And since 1997, any medical problem that emerges, we unleash those three competencies to That's find great. solutions. I think you can add a, a, another competency, it sounds like, and that is collaboration. Because oh. people keep saying, but your examples demonstrate, we are all in this together. Well, oh, that's a wonderful way to, to put a punctuation mark on a wonderful conversation. Uh, that is exactly what we've learned from this. These collaborations have broken down barriers that have existed in the past that don't need to, any, to exist any longer. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Migliori. My pleasure, and thank you for, for the... Uh, charming chat.